We're recording now. My name is Shannon Kringen, and you are watching Goddess Kring. And I just, I may or may not even upload this video. I wanted to talk about mental health. And right now it is December of 2015. I am 47 years old. And I am, my mental health is doing better than it ever has before. I have struggled most of my life with um, certain kinds of self esteem issues and lack of confidence. And I'm really confident in my artwork and my figure modeling and really kind of had a challenging love life never had kids, never got married, live alone with my cat. I'm an only child. Um, don't buy into labeling myself, uh, but I have been um, uh, told that I have some traits of borderline personality disorder, which really, um, oh, there's my kitty, which really, he's on. This is my kitty. This is my kitty. Ooh, nope, nope. Okay. He needs to go down. Okay, he doesn't want me to. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to upload this video because I don't know if it's um, the healthiest thing for me to do. But let's just say Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor is the famous uh, singer from Ireland. And I have been a fan of her music off and on for over 20 years. She's around my age. I'm 47 and I think she's 48 real similar age. Uh, I think she's a very talented, sensitive, emotional person. Apparently she was abused as a child by her mother and I don't know the rest of her family story, but I know lately she's been um, ranting and getting really upset and I'm seeing a pattern of uh, not seeing her own responsibility in her own recovery and her own health. And I, I've heard her say, in I think interviews that she is um, bipolar and I was going to say that borderline personality disorder and bipolar sometimes get uh, confused and misdiagnosed as far as I know bipolar is when you go from one extreme to the other of up and down um, and you have a hard time being stable mostly because of brain chemistry but I was going to say what's helped my mental health more than anything because I've been on antidepressants, uh, but I have not been diagnosed as bipolar. I have been um, unofficially told, not diagnosed, but unofficially told that I might be on the spectrum for borderline, although I'm a highly functional. If I'm borderline at all, it's, it's a highly functional kind because I've always been employed. I've always been able to hold down a job since I was 17. I've been working pretty much full time. And... Um, have never tried to commit suicide. I've thought about it, but many times, but I've never attempted it. And I don't drink or smoke or do any drugs. In fact, I'm totally against drugs to the point where I don't even like being stoned. I don't like marijuana. I went to uh, Amsterdam and ate some hash just to see what it was like, but I didn't enjoy that either. So I'm not really, I don't like drugs or alcohol at all. So I'm not into that. I was just going to say, I think Sinead O'Connor has borderline personality disorder, which maybe she's also bipolar. I have no idea. But I will just say that from what I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing her feel rejected by other people, but then she's not seeing her own role in being rejected by other people. Like she's telling her family, I need you to love me. Tell me why this is happening. But what she's not asked, she's not, she's not apologizing for any kind of anger or you know, when you freak out, it scares people. When you threaten to kill yourself, it scares people around you. It, 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 it scares your family and friends. People that are borderline sometimes like uh, lash out in anger and then they wonder why nobody wants to hang out with them. And then they blame other people for their own. So basically what borderline is, is if you're neglected or abused as a child, um, I wasn't really abused. My parents are both very sensitive, fairly loving people, but they're preoccupied with their own 
themselves in a certain way. And so as a child, I got sort of invalidated and my grandmother was kind of an odd character. She loved me, but she wasn't very affectionate and she kind of invalidated me. So I had various adults around me sort of invalidate me, meaning they weren't giving me the kind of mirroring that I needed. So my sense of self is very fragile. So when you're borderline, you have a fragile sense of self and so you're insecure and you're not quite sure who you are and so therefore it's hard to really have good stable relationships with other people what saved me because I have a certain amount of confidence and talent as an artist and I'm a good figure model for artists I have my life raft basically because I feel kinda like I don't really exist and I know that's absurd because look at me I'm a person I exist my heart beats my brain waves are doing their thing Obviously, I actually exist, but I'm constantly doubting myself, and I have obsessive compulsive tendencies, thoughts in my head that race around, and I'm not somebody who wants to take medication for this, and so, okay, I was just going to go off on Sinead about Sinead O'Connor, but I, I'm feeling like she has certain borderline traits, meaning she's understandably upset that her I think she has four kids with different men, which is a little confusing and, and chaotic. And she has her music career and she's got custody battles and, and, and her basically some of her relatives are estranged from her. And so her kids apparently are not happy with her and she feels rejected by them. And she doesn't seem to understand that she might, she herself might have a role in why they are upset. Like, she seems to think that other people are being mean and unfair to her, which they might be rejecting her, but maybe they have a reason why they're upset. And so I feel like I'm just, I'm maybe I'm just seeing part of myself in that, that sometimes I push people away and then I wonder why I'm lonely, but it's because you, if you push people away, but I don't, I never had kids. I don't, I don't, um, I chose not to have kids because I have such psychological issues and I, I right now have a boyfriend which is amazing to me because I've had sort of an unstable love life and made some choices that weren't healthy for me. Uh, I've tried many times and now I've been dating somebody for over a year now and it's going pretty well and I'm amazed by that because I tend to be kind of insecure and unstable and my life raft really is my figure modeling and my website and my jobs and uh, I have this amazing landlord who charges a good deal on rent which is amazing and I have free Obamacare because I'm low income and I, I don't want to talk about all my personal stuff but let's just say that I have a way of coping and functioning despite my problems and some people think that I'm a fraud or that I'm fake because I apparently if you look at my website shannonkringen.com goddess kring I seem like I'm you know, I'm this photogenic, talented artist who takes hundreds of pictures of herself and I take beautiful pictures of animals and I've painted shoes and given them to Tori Amos. I've done some pretty cool things that seems like a very confident person would do all of that. And that's true. Part of me is confident and I have the guts to do that. I just got back from England, although I stayed with some really nice friends in England but it wasn't that fun because I was so afraid to spend money that I hardly spent a dime. I like just bought food out of grocery stores and just drank tap water and I was just so cheap the whole time. And my friends that I stayed with were very nice to me, wonderful people, generous, kind. I got to see Shakespeare, um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Is that how you say his name? Benedict Cumberbatch? I think that's how you say his name. I love that actor really really amazing to see Shakespeare so I've done these cool things and yet I constantly doubt myself worry about the future uh, I've thought about suicide many times again I've never tried it hopefully never will because I am afraid of death I don't really want to die sometimes though I just want to escape the pain that I feel the sort of torture that I put myself through and so I see Sinead O'Connor as somebody who I don't think she sees her own role in her pain I, I think she maybe doesn't know how to acknowledge her own dark side without beating herself up. See, if you if you see your own dark side and then you beat the shit out of yourself for having a dark side, then that doesn't help. 
But if you can somehow look at your dark side and go, oh, I'm acting like Darth Vader. No wonder my family doesn't want to be around me. Um, if you're abusive, you know, if you have been abused, it's easy to become the abuser of yourself and of others. And so I'm thinking Sinead O'Connor is not seeing her own role in what she's created in her life. Um, I just, I noticed that for myself is that I'm 47 and I live by myself. I do have a boyfriend and I feel like we're going to be together for a while. It seems like it's going well, better than anything else I've been involved in. I've never really had like a lot of boyfriends that, that where it was a healthy, strong thing that lasted. So um, my love life has been chaotic chaotic. I've been modeling for artists for 23 years and I've been painting shoes for about 30 years. So those things are stable. Like there's part of me that's stable and stoic. Like I'm really good at modeling for artists, doing my art, updating my website, taking care of my cat. I'm really good with animals. Uh, I'm really good at that. But I basically feel really insecure most of the time. Although I guess I've gotten better because I'm in my 20s. See, I'm, I'm in my 40s now. In my 20s, I was freaking out all the time and creating drama in relationships. Um, I don't have a lot of close friends right now because I, I sadly that I, I don't know. I think I'm kind of a loner, kind of an introvert, like a lot of solitude. And, you know, I like to do show and tell online. But I pretty much avoid people. Um because I find it so stressful to really try to be close friends with people and bond with people, especially women. I really don't have women friends. I have a few online women friends, but not a lot of friends uh, where I hang out with in person. And I know some other figure models and we help each other get gigs and that's really nice. And that's, but that's more like a working type relationship. And I model for some amazing female painters uh, and have a good relationship with them in terms of I'm the model, they're the artist painting me or drawing me, but I'm not real emotionally close to these people and I don't know how to do that. So I don't know. I just, I'm seeing this Sinead O'Connor thing. It's reminding me of some things and I really hope Sinead stays alive. I wish, I personally wish that she would find some kind of mental health support, like nutrition. Like I quit eating wheat and it helped my mental health greatly. So like nutrition, exercise, nutrition and exercise really helps somebody that has mental challenges, moods and strong emotions. And if you're trying to heal from post-traumatic stress from an abusive childhood or any kind of post-traumatic stress, any reason why you have any kind of post-traumatic stress or any kind of personality disorder, any kind of like dysfunctional thinking habits in your head or brain chemistry that's challenging. I'm not really big on pharmaceutical medications. I'm, I'm better, I'm bigger on talking to somebody about all of your issues and about your ad identity and your relationship with yourself, your ego, your heart, your soul, your, your nutrition, your exercise, because your brain chemistry is very much affected by everything, what you eat, how much you sleep. Um, I mean, really, I sleep a lot. I eat pretty healthy. I eat, um, I don't eat any grain. I eat hardly any grain. I stopped eating wheat like two years ago. I ended up losing 40 pounds. My thyroid was having issues. Now my thyroid is normal. Um, I exercise almost every day. And when I don't exercise and get the endorphins, I feel like my mental health, I get irritable, depressed, moody, don't sleep as well. So it's like you need adequate exercise you need healthy food. You need to drink plenty of fluids and mostly water. And you need some kind of psychotherapy type support, um, spiritual guidance. But I'm not, I don't mean like God, like religion, but I mean like a spiritual, like a feeling of connection. To me, spiritual means that you're connected to the whole universe, the body, mind, spirit, the plants, the animals. Um, me, my family, my friends, like spiritual meaning instead of just people being separate and competitive with each other, there's an interrelationship. People are interconnected. And so to me, spiritual me is, is partly about feeling like you're connected to everyone else, plants, animals, and other humans. So what's my main point? My main point is that I see there's something going on like 
like Sinead O'Connor doesn't see her own role in creating the life that she has created. And because she's rich and famous, it might make it even harder for her to get the help that she needs because maybe she has people around her that just tell her what she wants to hear or because she's rich and famous, people assume that she just wants attention and that she has no reason to be upset. You know, they're invalidating her because she's clearly in a lot of pain, apparently has almost committed suicide a few times. And I really hope she sticks around because I think she's a really has a good heart and soul and is a very talented um, singer, vocalist, amazing, um, beautiful human being. And she has four kids and I guess she has a grandkid now. I mean, she's created, you know, family, but her family apparently is estranged from her right now and they're not happy with her. And I don't think she sees her own role in that. I'll take that. I've done the opposite. I didn't have any kids. I'm an only child, never been married, never had kids. I had an abortion in my twenties, which I don't even want to talk about, but that's a really sad experience. I had the guts to get pregnant with this person. And then I changed my mind and he wanted to have a kid, but he didn't want to get married and he was polyamorous and he was this wild hippie. He wanted to go live on a commune and I was too scared. And I wanted to maintain my independence and be able to make money and support myself. And I couldn't, I couldn't understand how I was going to have a child and still pay my rent. And I didn't want to be a welfare mother. And I didn't, this guy that I was going to have the baby with, he didn't believe in marriage. And, um, at all zero he was very much off the grid counterculture didn't want to have any kind of legal you know he wanted to have a kid with me and yet he didn't want to be legally connected to me in any way and i've never really wanted to get married anyway so i was just too afraid to do that so i changed my mind um i'm just sorry that i let it happen in the first place or i wish i would have just gone through with it but i'll never know what would have happened that drives me nuts sometimes that's what i did in my 20s I've never wanted to have a kid ever since then. And so I never have. And I've just, um, I live alone and I do my artwork and I'm very talented. And I kind of think I should be a lot more successful now than I actually am. I've been modeling full time since 1997. I guess that's pretty amazing. I have my own freelance business as a model. I model for medical students. I model for art students. Uh, I have this really cool website, shannonkringen.com, which I've updated for 15 years. I mean, I've done all this cool stuff, and yet I'm not, I'm not very confident or secure or successful. I'm sort of a low-income uh, person who worries a lot about the future, and I have a you know depression and anxiety that kind of comes and goes, and. I'm taking an herb called ashwagandha to try to help me deal with that, try to get daily exercise, try to have better relationships with myself and with others, try to eat as healthy as I can, try to kick, I'm trying to cut sugar out of my diet now because I, I eat, uh, I, I quit wheat like over two years ago and that helped my mental health and my physical health. So basically I'm just very, um, I'm actually doing amazingly well. I'm just really hard on myself. I tend to think I should be a lot more successful than I am by now because I'm really talented in some ways and yet I'm totally insecure. I'm totally insecure and I kind of get envious of other people and feel competitive and yet and yet part of me doesn't even care and doesn't really have much of an ego. I don't know. This part of me is humble and yet I don't know. I'm conflicted. I, I get um, easily confused, conflicted. My relationship with myself is sort of like all over the map and I love plants and animals and I love the music of Tom Petty and Tori Amos and Hunter Wasser, the, art, the artist named Hunter Wasser. And I love to travel and I wish that I could learn to love myself more and love others as well. When I say love myself, I don't just mean some kind of narcissistic self-centered thing, but I mean truly love and appreciate myself as a human and truly love and appreciate others and give and receive with others in a more loving way. But I am kind of, see, I wonder how much of my desire for solitude is that I'm wounded and how much of it is that I'm just a loner. Am I a loner? Am I wounded? I'm kind of introverted and yet and my boyfriend kind of thinks my introversion might be partly a wound, not that being introverted is a wound. Because being introverted can be, a lot of amazing leaders in the world are introverted. But they're introverted extroverts. Like they're introverted, like they like to write. 
and then they get on stage and share it with people and their public speakers. And so there's different kinds of introverts. Some introverts, yeah, like to be on stage and um, share. Like I'm sort of introverted and yet I'm talking into a video camera and publishing it online. So therefore that's a little bit extroverted, I guess. But I'm talking to you about my internal dialogue. So it's in, I'm talking to you about my introspectiveness, but I'm expressing it outwardly. Uh, which comes off as sort of narcissism, perhaps. Preoccupation with the self. But they say, if you don't love yourself, how can you love others? And then some people say, oh, get over yourself. Oh, just get, forget about yourself. It's like, well, wait a minute. I don't believe in a, a band because then I abandon myself. See, if you, if you abandon yourself, there's a poem I have called Self-Abandonment Got Me Stranded Again, Polluted and Uprooted. So if you ignore yourself, if you say, oh, I'm not important, I'm going to forget about myself, that's not, that's not very loving. If you honor and respect yourself, but you kind of let go of your self-consciousness, that's good. And then you love yourself and love others. See, I have a hard time with that. I, I tend to abandon myself. If I abandon myself, then I'm all passive aggressive and I don't enjoy other people. So it's like I have to learn how to be self-centered in a positive way so that I can be, feel like I'm a whole person. See, I tend to feel like I'm a broken person. Like I'm not, I feel like I don't exist. I'm invisible. I'm empty. There's something wrong with me. Nobody loves me. I just feel icky. It, that's a borderline personality trait. And I almost feel like Sinead O'Connor has that kind of issue. Like she doesn't truly value herself. And she thinks that it's a bunch of other people that aren't appreciating her. But maybe she is not appreciating herself. And she expects to get from others what she can only give to herself. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Emotional needs. I've always been ashamed of needing other people. I feel like I shouldn't need other people. So now I'm 47 and I'm still trying to figure out what can I give and receive with other people and what do I need to give myself? What can only I give myself when I'm home alone in my apartment, sleeping and eating and doing, you know, talking to myself in my own head? We all have to take care of ourselves, but we need other people as well. So we need to give and receive love with other people. But some things we can only give ourselves. You know what I mean? I feel like if you're a healthy, whole adult, you just naturally do what I'm saying. You just you just take care of you. You're just like, well, of course I like, of course I respect myself and I value myself and I'm a good person like everybody else. Well, of course. That's normal. But for me, I, I routinely abandon myself and abuse myself. And so that's fucked up. So that that messes everything up. So if you have those kind of habits, you can, you know. So I feel kind of like, yeah, I'm still working through all this stuff. Hey, here I am, 47. So my name is Shannon Kringen. Check out my website. I have a whole bunch of blogs and I do artwork and I do spoken word and I'm a figure model for artists and I for those who don't know what that is, I'm the I'm the person that stands nude, very still, while they draw and paint. So that's my full-time job is an art model. Okay, and there it is. And I do a whole bunch of artwork as well. So okay, thank you for listening to Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. Yes. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that ramble about mental health. <laughs>